Hi, I'm Kelly Hushin, the editor of the ETL blog, and I'm here at the Mobile Shopping Spring Conference in San Francisco with Sherry Rudolph, the VP of e-commerce from Wet Seal. Hi, how are Hi, you today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Are you guys local? We are not. We're based in Southern California. Oh, South great. Of Los okay. Angeles. Well, yeah. thanks for coming up no here. No problem. Of course. The weather's been beautiful, it so has. it's great. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So um, your colleague Alyssa is about to give some presentations. She is. And yes. um, I know that Wet Seal is doing a lot of really cool stuff with social media, um, and you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on there. But um, can you just give us an overview of where you guys are sure. at with mobile? Um, how, when did you start? What are you doing? Do you have an app? Do you have a site? Sure. What, what are you doing there? Absolutely. So social and mobile for us go really hand in hand. And as far as the retail space goes, I think we've been sort of on the cutting edge and pretty progressive in what we're doing in both aspects of that space, so both social and mobile. Um, we have our mobile strategy kind of breaks down into three main pieces. One is that we have our WAP enabled shopping site. So you can shop directly from your smartphone at wetseal.com or at our other brand, rv.com. Um, the second pillar is that we do have an application for the iPhone and the iPad, and we're looking at developing something similar for the Android as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the third piece is that we use those not only to drive sales online, but we also use them to enable people to purchase in the store. So for example, our iPhone application, it's called the iRunway, um, it allows people to go in and you can actually scan the barcode of a product in the store and then you can see all the outfits that have been styled by other Wet Seal community members on the website. So we kind of tie those things together. So we've leveraged mobile to really give us another platform for this whole social merchandising strategy that we have. So on the site, there's an outfitter capability that allows you to put outfits together. We translate that to a mobile platform to allow people to interact with it in that way, but then that also enables them to take that experience with them into our brick and mortar stores and encourage them to merchandise on their own that way so we can cross sell them into other categories or introduce other products to them and it, and it really functions as a great um, platform for product discovery. So very interesting. So that would make me assume that you guys started more with the social and then transitioned it to a mobile we, platform? Or? We did. From that perspective, we did. You're absolutely right. And we found some really interesting things just with the social aspect. Um, using this social merchandising approach online we found that it's actually had a big impact on how people interact with our products on the site and ultimately has improved our conversion rates and our basket size. Um, if people are interacting with that social merchandising content that other consumers just like them are creating, that tends to, or at least what we've seen, it, it tends to have a bigger impact on them as consumers than it would if, if we as Wet Seal employees were necessarily styling the outfits ourselves. So that social element has had a big impact on, on how we position the brand and ultimately how it drives people through to purchase on the website and the mobile website. So do you think that that um, is telling when it comes to what people really want to do with mobile? Because I, I'm hearing a lot about um, deciding what your goals are with mobile. Is it really a conversion goal or is it a goal to just get people engaged with the brand and then therefore you know, end up increasing conversion rates? Right, right. Um, what do you think is, is a good goal for a company who, let's say, is maybe not so sure about how to approach their, their mobile strategy, but maybe they have a really good social strategy in right. place, or maybe they, you know, they have other things that they can learn from and pull from. Yeah. Well, how do you approach mobile I don't in that think, way? I don't, I don't think there's, um, you know, one answer for everybody. Definitely not. I think you you said it right yourself. So you really have to figure out what your goals are. Mm. For us at Wet Seal, which is what I can speak to, is we looked at at all of these things that we're doing. So we have the websites, we have the applications, we have this social content. Right. We also have third party relationships with companies like Shopkick and Swag mm -hmm. to extend our uh, footprint and to also get, um, again, drive people into the stores as well as online. So we've done, done a lot of these things and for us, we decided to focus on the things that were most important to us and from that perspective, the social piece was really critical because we wanted to make sure we got that right and it was around our products. But we partnered with people who were really experts in um, mobile commerce and so our partner, a company out of Austin called Dinky, is a company that manages and um, developed our mobile websites for us. So we, you know, very clear early on, that was a smart thing for us to outsource. We weren't the experts in mobile commerce, we wanted to partner with somebody who was. But on the other hand, we wanted to keep the application development in-house because so much of it relied on the social content that we're enabling our consumers to produce, and that was really important for us to keep our hands around completely. 
Right. Now, what about, I know you can't talk too specifically about numbers, but what have you seen as far as ROI goes with mobile? I mean, was it a difficult sell to get people bought into, you know, investing in this channel? Um, and then when you got some positive results, were they then bought in more? I, I've heard that a lot, so I don't yeah, know how it still, worked at you know, It's still early days for us. I mm -hmm. think we're in a, in, a, in a great company where there's a lot of support for all the channels that we're that we're selling in, whether it's bricks and mortar, whether it's on the site, or whether it's mobile. Um, so we're in a really great corporate environment for that kind of support. But I think it's really early days. Mobile's still a very small part of our overall, or certainly our overall sales, but even as a part of our e-commerce sales. Mm -hmm. Still small, but we definitely see some growth patterns over the last 18, 24 months. Um, and we're seeing this year producing, you know, year over year, we're seeing growth over where we were last year for sure. And we think it's going to continue to be a really important part of the mix. For us at Wet Seal, um, depending on which brand you're talking about, Wet Seal is, is a very teen-focused brand. Mm -hmm. Arden B focuses on women from 20 to 40. So we know that our girls and our women are really relying heavily on their mobile devices mm -hmm. to make life easier for them, and that includes shopping. So we right. expect to see it really grow, and that's why we focus so heavily on, on making sure that we're aware of the need to be and will continue to evolve mm -hmm. as necessary. And when, again, uh, remind me, did you get into the mobile space? So we launched our um, application actually first in October 2009. Okay. And then we followed it in 2010 with the mobile sites. So it was a little bit, you know, maybe the opposite of what you would intuitively expect. We, did, we launched the application first, which was not e-commerce enabled. Okay. Uh, but it now drives to the websites for both brands. Interesting. Yeah. And as someone who started, um, you know, you got a pretty good leg up. Some people are still not even there yet. Sure, right. Could you um, offer, like, what would you say are some of the maybe two or three top yeah. tips to starting out, a, you know, a mobile platform? What, what would you say are maybe the challenges or the right. things to keep in mind to keep going? Um, I, I mean, I think the biggest one, like I said, was you really need to determine where you want to really focus your resources. Mm -hmm. And we made a decision really early on that this was something that we needed to outsource. And we went to a partner mm -hmm. that's really an expert in the space. So I think it really does come back to that initial discussion of what are your goals and what are you really you know, trying to achieve and where are your capabilities versus the capabilities that another party could potentially bring to you. And then the other the other piece of it, I think, is to really just be ready to experiment. It's a it's a cycle of test and invest, right? You just don't know. None of us know yet what this is all going to turn out to be. We just all know that there's a lot of really great opportunity, um, but you have to continue to test. And you have to have the appetite um, and the tolerance, I think, for you know, a little bit of ambiguity and not really knowing what some of the results are going to be because this channel is still pretty immature, pretty young. Yeah. yeah. And last question, what do you think is uh, in the future for mobile? I mean, I know that's such a general I, question, I, but I do you think that people will start focusing more on um, experiential stuff in right. mobile or do you think people will start to, you know, be more confident about the mobile channel as its own standalone? I'm hearing a lot of people say that, you know, companies are approaching it as if, like, how can we make it like the PC experience? Right. And some people are saying, well, we don't want it to why do that. Why does it need to do yeah, that? Why does right. it need to do that? So what, right. what do you think is the next wave of developments? Oh, gosh, if I knew that, I'd be down having meetings with the VCs on Sand Hill Road. <laughs> um, but I think there's a couple things. It, 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 growth, for sure. Definitely going to see the continued growth. Um, I think the latest statistics around smartphone adoption are something like, you know, at least a third population of smartphones and that will just continue to grow. Um, and as we get better with the technology and we get better with what those applications are, that they're actually relevant and useful for people, those adoption um, curves will just continue to accelerate. So I think, you know, no matter what, we're going to see some really incredible growth. And I think we'll see some really innovative things coming across the mobile platform. I mean, we already are. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't know what they're all going to be, yeah. but I think we'll continue to see a lot of innovation on that platform. Um, and not only the you know mobile platform, but tablets as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of opportunity on the tablet side, which we sort of group into right. mobile as a whole. Um, and for us, and I think for a lot of retailers, what it's going to have to be is really looking at this as an intersection between social and mobile, mm -hmm. and then ultimately local, especially if you have mm -hmm. a bricks and mortar um, chain that complements your online 
business. Right, so it's really bringing all those channels together, together. and you know, you can't operate in a silo in any one of them. Yeah, absolutely, right, absolutely. Okay, great, well thank you so much thank for sitting you. down. We'll have to go hear Alyssa's presentation now. Yes, absolutely. So I'll let us get up and do that, great. so thank you. Thanks.